Welcome to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you are tuning in with us today. We believe today's message is going to strengthen and encourage you. So get your Bibles ready as Pastor Jeremy File is teaching today's message. From God's perspective, all of his promises are yes and amen. He's not going to change his mind. If you seek the Lord next week for healing, let's say all of a sudden you're having symptoms show up in your body and you seek him for healing, the answer is yes. You seek him next year for the same thing, the answer is yes. And there is no sickness, there is no disease that God's ever told anyone know about. Religion has come back and said that because good people that mean well, they're ignorant of the word, but they have said, well, I asked God for healing and he didn't heal me, so he said no. And then they'll hear a preacher somewhere preaching and saying, what do you do when God tells you no? Well, now, if he tells you no, then you know you didn't ask according to the word. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if he hears us, then we have the petitions that we've asked of him. This is what, uh, knowing what he promised is important. But always understand that from his perspective, it's yes and amen. That means so be it unto you. Everybody say yes, yes. and amen. amen. Well, there's a lot of promises that have already been paid for at Calvary. Thank God for Calvary. Thank God for the empty tomb that Jesus, he didn't stay on the cross. He was buried for three days. He was in that tomb and he rose again, conquering, praise God. And that sealed the deal. You ever looked at someone and said, that seals the deal? Well, what seals the deal is that Jesus died. He was buried for you and he rose again the third day. That seals the deal. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, now I say that seals the deal from God's perspective. Are you going to walk in it? That's still where the question mark is. You can press into the things of God or you can get lax. I thank God because God moved upon our youth this week. It, everything I've heard, thank God for invasion and what happened this week. I, re, I really believe this. I told my wife several times. Thank God we sent you. You're coming back a different person. Amen. God did some things in you that you couldn't do in yourself, but you're going to have to keep the fire burning. See, at 17, I was in that youth to, uh, ministry like that. And because of thunderstorms, we had to stay late. You've heard the story. I won't go into all the details. Long story short, I looked at my friend as they're laying hands on people. And I said, I don't believe in falling out, even though every single young person fell out as far as I could see. I don't believe in falling out. And I stood there four foot from the wall, about as far as that is probably away from me, about like this. A little four foot nine lady comes by. And I only know that because they talked about it. She's the pastor's wife. She's only four foot nine. That's the only reason I know her. Huh? But she came and just put a finger right there on my chest and timber. And I got up from there, and this guy, he still lives in this city, and I told him, I said, you're an integral part of the time I got really drunk in the Holy Ghost. Because he had long hair, it's red, and he was looking up to heaven, shaking his hair, and saying, no, God, I will not do that. Or, yes, I will. Yes, I will. And that, that's not that funny. But I laughed for an hour and a half straight over that. <laughs> Why? Because when I went timber, the Lord was doing a work on the inside of me. And I got up, and they all were like, File, you're drunk in the Holy Ghost. And I said, no, 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 I'm not either. And they said, yeah, you are. And then I'm rolling laughing. And I could not, they had to drag me to my dorm that night to go to sleep. And you know what? My life's never been the same since that time. But I've breathed a lot and blinked a lot since then and realized to keep this fire going, I've got to continue to make decisions that are going to continue to stir up the gift of God on the inside of me. And praise God, if you're stirred up today, I believe you're going to receive an impartation here. So here we are today starting this mini, notice how I keep saying it, I'm, I'm, I'm by faith declaring a mini two-part series, this little one. And it's an add-on to taking possession. We're going to be looking at how do we take possessions by the Spirit of God. Say, thank God for the Word. Thank God for the Word. Go to Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. And I put the scriptures on the screen here. New King James. Excuse me, not today. It's all King James Version. I like King James because I have a lot of the scriptures memorized in King James. So I may really flow today. So just be ready. Zechariah 4, 6. Aren't you thankful for the Word? Then he answered and he spake unto me and he said, this is the word 
of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Now you can go ahead and rightfully I can prove this to you and put your name right there. This is the word of the Lord to you, whatever your name is. Zerubbabel here was called by God along with some other people to rebuild the temple. And you need to understand from Zerubbabel's perspective that was impossible. I don't have time to lay out all the whys, but trust me, if you really study, you'll find out what I'm telling you is true. So from Zerubbabel's perspective, what God was telling him was impossible. But look at what God says. Here's the word of the Lord. How many came to hear a word from God today? Here's the word of the Lord. It's not by might. Have you heard this one before? It's not by power, but by my spirit. Glory to God, says the Lord of hosts. I'm going to repeat that. Don't you ever forget this. It's not by your might. It's not by your power. You may be strong. You may be the strongest man or woman in here, but it's not by your power. But it's by the Spirit, says the Lord God. See, when the Lord calls somebody to do something, He's the one that gives them sustaining strength to get the job done. Turn my mic down just a little bit. I'm going to hold a little bit closer to my, my mouth here. So if you'll turn it down, I might get loud today, but I don't want anybody having to go out with bleeding ears. Our sound men are doing a great job. I'm kind of trying to be funny there. I love sound men. I was a sound man 10 years. All right, praise the Lord. The call here was to rebuild the temple. That was impossible. What if God called you to rebuild? He actually, he has. You just don't realize this. He's called you to help in this end time hour. That's why you're here for harvest. And we are being built together as a dwelling place, a temple of the Holy Spirit. I know our bodies are the temple also. Don't you know that? That's what new, the Bible says in the New Testament. Don't you know your body is the temple? But when we all come together corporately, there should be a strong anointing in this house because if our body is the temple, then look what happens when we're assembled together. There's a strong presence of the Lord in the house. So it's, you are very important. It's important for you to get this. That if you are going to be who God called you to be and be faithful, you don't have to depend on your own power. Because it's not by your own power. It's not by your own might. But it's by my spirit. You got that? My spirit says the Lord. So it's the spirit of the Lord. There are things that we're called to do by God that we're not going to be able to do on our own. So when you feel like, well, the Lord's called me to do this, or maybe it's give to a missionary, or maybe something along those lines. I don't know. I don't want to say too many things. I'm not trying to lead you into that. I'm just saying, whatever the Lord tells you to do, it may feel impossible. But you don't have to lean on your own strength. You see, I have spent a lot more years sitting where you're sitting instead of standing up here where I'm standing. I've spent just over 10 years doing this, 10 and a half years uh, being a senior pastor. I've preached before that, of course, but I've spent the majority of my life, that would be 33 plus years, just sitting there and serving and doing everything like that. But, but I sit service after service and listen service after service, right? And I would think, especially when I was younger, there's no way I could get up and speak in front of anyone. I was so afraid of what people thought of me that I thought I could never get up and speak in front of anyone. But then I realized if this is God's call, which it is God's call, then i got to stop leaning on my own strength. But I've got to start leaning into his spirit. It's going to be by his spirit. Everybody say, by his spirit. By his spirit. See, we are sustained by the spirit of the Lord. If you're taking notes, write that down. You can just personalize it. I am sustained by the presence and spirit of the Lord. This is why you have to learn to lean in to His Spirit. You can stay up to date with everything happening at Accelerate Church by downloading our app. Add events directly to your calendar, receive notifications when services are going live, hear previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, and you can even give right there from your mobile device. The Accelerate Church app has everything you need right there in the palm of your hand. Head over to your app store today and type in Accelerate Church Amarillo to download to your mobile device. He downloads his strength to us through our spirits. We're a lot more familiar with that than when I was a kid about downloads. But, you know, how many times have you seen, and it bugs me personally, but a, a notification show up on your phone, your device, you need to update. There's a new software update. 
Like lately, I've noticed when that mine shows up, it's just like relentless. Every time I go grab my phone, it's on there, and I'm like, get off there. I open it up, it's on there again. I'm like, man, they're being pushy about this. And the other night, I was, I was, it just kept popping up. So I said, fine, download now. Walked off. You say, well, why don't you have attitude? Because they're being so pushy about this. But they said it was, I read the details on it, and it said these are security details or updates that need to happen to keep your personal information secure. So I was like, okay, I better do this quick. And we almost do it. Most people don't have attitude. I really wasn't super angry or nothing. I was just like, okay, fine. We'll get this download. And guess what? That wasn't the first software update I've had. There's been quite a few of them. And every time we go through it, things change. You have to, little things you have to get used to. You know what I'm talking about? Well, guess what? There's just a perfect example. As you're living life and following the Lord Jesus Christ, he wants to download his sustaining power into your spirit. But if you have attitude about it, then it's just going to have to wait. And there's going to be some things you're insecure about because God's not able to give you everything that he's wanting to give you to do what he called you to do. To say it another way, he supplies his strength through my spirit man. If I'm going to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, I should say that. But if that's going to be true, I've got to realize this is how he's going to do it. He's going to do it through my spirit. You see, we are spirit beings that will live forever. We live in a body. And we have a mind, will, and emotions. We're a three-part being made, in, being made in the image of God. Are you following me? So he supplies his strength to me through my spirit. Are you clear on that? Here's scripture that supports that, Proverbs 18. Say it one more time. Thank God for the word. Proverbs 18, verse 14. The spirit of a man or a woman, this is mankind, will sustain his infirmity. Boy, that's good news. Infirmity here means weakness or sickness. Now, I think that's very interesting. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. So I looked up the words there, sustain his infirmity. Those three words, it's two Hebrew words. Here's what it means. To provide sustenance in weakness. Did you catch that? The spirit of a man will provide sustenance in weakness. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So what I've got to do is get that power that Jesus is working on the inside in my spirit and get it in operation on the outside. Oh, what a joy it'll be in your life when you do that. Praise God. <laughs> our sustenance doesn't come from another taco. Though it's sounding pretty good at 1130 in the morning right now. Maybe you don't like Mexican food like me, but I used to tell people I'm half Mexican because I ate Mexican food all the time. But then I found out that wasn't true. Instead, I'm part Indian. Anyway, we won't talk anymore about that. Our sustenance doesn't come from the food we eat. Our sustenance doesn't come from people. You might write that down. I know we think that. But our sustenance does not come from the food we eat. Our sustenance doesn't come from people. But guess what? Our sustenance comes from God who is a spirit. This is why we keep looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. What does that mean to look unto Jesus? It means you look at the word. If you look in John 1, 1, you don't, I don't have it on the screen, but you can jot it down. The word was made flesh, right? He was the word. In fact, I, you know what? I'm just going to read it. Go to John 1, 1. Yeah, it's not on the screen, not pre-planned, but you need to hear this. Because what does that mean? You've got to look to Jesus. If you're going to make it in this end time hour, there's some things you won't make it through unless you look to Jesus. Because if you look at people, you're going to give up. So John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And look at this part. The Word was God. If the word was God, the word is God. Did you catch that? So therefore, what does it mean to look to Jesus? It means to look to the word. You need to look to the word. See, how are you going to be sustained in an end time hour where deception is all around? And people are falling like flies to deception. How are you going to navigate it and make it? I'll tell you how. 
You're going to learn to lean into the Spirit of God who speaks to your spirit, man, and understand that's where my sustenance comes from. And that's why I keep looking to him. Well, what about what they say? I don't care what they say. What does Jesus say? I haven't found a give up verse yet. Thou shalt give up when the pressure's on. Thou shalt falter like a leaf in the West Texas wind the next time you hear a false prophet speak. No, I just reject it. No, the word keeps me safe. False prophets couldn't be in business if you knew your Bible. We got to look to Jesus because that's how you look past the circumstances. Are you with me today? Well, what does that mean? Look to the word and that'll get you past any circumstance, any feeling. You see, I want, I want to tell you something today that you've got to catch. Please catch this. Victory is going to be by the spirit. Breakthrough from whatever's holding you back, is going to be by the Spirit of God. Healing is going to be by the Spirit of God. Strength from on high is going to be by the Spirit of God. Hey, taking possession of what he promised is going to be by the Spirit of God. Look at your neighbor and say, by his Spirit. Many people would say, well, that's true. This isn't a deep revelation. But today I want to talk to you about something. Go to 1 Thessalonians 5.19. And we're talking about by his spirit. That's how we get breakthrough. That's how we walk in divine health. But look at what this says. And we have the scripture up above the reference there. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 says, quench not the spirit. Boy, that's a four word verse. That's the kind I liked when I was in Christian school. They said you need to memorize the scripture. I love Jesus wept because I had that one down pat. John eleven thirty five. 35, I was like, please let me say that for my Bible memory. Jesus wept. That's so easy. I also like pray without ceasing. I was like, oh, I like that one. Are y'all following me? I can tell by the look of some of your faces, you've never had to memorize scripture. Well, this was one of my favorites too. I could go to this because I could remember this. Quench not the spirit. But did you know just because I had that memorized didn't mean I knew what it meant? To quench means to extinguish. What a Sunday for me to preach this, you guys coming back from invasion. I didn't even think about that. This, the, the Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. Extinguish not the Holy Spirit. That's what it quench means, extinguish. And here's what that means. I looked it up. It means to cause a fire or a light to cease to burn. To put an end to, or get this, to cancel. Boy, isn't this relevant in America right now? With cancel culture alive and, and awake, man. People trying to get woke to canceling things they don't like. And wake you up to it. You know what? There's something super dangerous, though. You've got to catch this because I told you breakthroughs by the Spirit. Healings by the Spirit. Strength is by the Spirit. Taking possession is by the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. You can cancel His influence. Otherwise, this is a pointless verse. We cannot, and we will not, be sustained in adversity if we extinguish or cancel the Holy Spirit's influence. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have Life Links. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for Life Links. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. Our mouths are the first thing that's connected to the influence of the Holy Spirit. I want you to think about this. This is why when you're filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit, what happens? You get a new language. And those of you that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, see, I just want everyone that, that's not to understand how easy this is. It's by faith. I've received it. I want you to pray in your own personal prayer language right now. Woo! 
Woo! Bale to sinama kore bati ese bale eto noa. Habalo koboti na hashulobota hata hasa. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now see how orderly that was? People think, well, that's crazy. Well, if you're an unbeliever, how come you ain't praying in the Spirit? Because you can't get this unless you're blood bought. Somebody said, well, that sounds arrogant. No one's confident in the gift that God's given me. And here's what I found out. When I pray in tongues, that doesn't extinguish him. When I get busy doing other stuff and don't have time to do that, that puts a little on that fire. But a way to stay stirred up where I'm not quenching the spirit is to pray in the spirit. So do you understand? Your mouth is connected to this. Now, not just from that, but I want you to look at Ephesians 4, 29, because it's not just praying in tongues. That's in the positive. But you've got to watch these negative words, because Ephesians 4, 29 says, let no corrupt communication, zero, none, proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace, that's empowerment, unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Now, how are you going to get breakthrough? By the Spirit. How are you going to make it, even this week, for what God's called you to do? It's going to be by His Spirit. Well, if you quench that Spirit, or you grieve the Holy Spirit of God, you're not going to have your sustaining power. And I want you to notate the difference in quenching. Quenching is literally extinguishing. So it's putting water on the fire that God's burning on the inside of you. There's one of my favorite worship songs right now, and, and I play it over and over. And I'm sure if you come to morning prayer, you may be tired of it by now. But here's why I like it. Because he says this, I'm living with a fire burning on the inside of me. And I always think of that verse in 1 Thessalonians, quench not. Why I like singing that? Because I thank the Lord that he's stirring that fire on the inside of me. And I don't forget that. There's something on the inside of me ticking. I'm not lethargic or, oh, I just can't make it through this day. No, I'm well able to because I've got his spirit on the inside of me and greater is he that's on the inside of me than he that's in this world. Glory to God. I've got nothing to fear. The greater one is living inside of me. Glory to God. But if I grieve the Holy Spirit, wow. I'm in trouble. It says, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Some of y'all just blow the seal right off your life because you're grieving. You're living a lifestyle of quenching him, and that leads to a lifestyle of grieving him. Grieve means distress. Did you realize that you could distress the Holy Spirit of God? I don't think most people realize that. But it's right there in your Bible. It means to make sad, to cause grief, to be in heaviness. Wow. Did you catch what got us there, though? Polluted speech. Polluted words grieve the Holy Ghost. When you speak perverted words, and that's words not based on the Bible, it can cause grief of the Holy Spirit, especially for those of you that brag, I ain't got no filter. <laughs> It's about how funny it is. Not a bit funny. You ain't got no filter, huh? So let me, let me get this straight. You say you're a born-again Christian, but you practice grieving the Holy Spirit. Things don't go well for those type of Christians. And that's the reason the Lord has me preaching this to you, not because he's mad at you, because he wants you to get hooked up with the power from on high to break through any barrier Praise God. To walk in healing over any sickness, even the deadly kind. The doctor says, well, you have a headache. Okay. Well, you have cancer. Oh, no. People freak out. They both should move you the same. Where you say, no, I know what the Lord says. I'm not going to let polluted speech come out of my mouth. You see, I want to say it again. If you practice quenching the spirit, canceling his influence, I, mean, I may have moved too fast past that. I want you to catch. If he influences you to do something, you ought to do it. You see, it's going to be the Holy Spirit that is an influence saying, why don't you go ahead and raise your hand to me? That's not going to be the devil. Worship's going on. The devil doesn't want you to raise your hand. Who do you think wants to hold you back from entering into praise and worship? 
Not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's trying to say, come on in, come on in, come on in. Because if you'll draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. You know, David started praising God so buck wild that his outer garment flew off. His kingly robe flew off. Now, he wasn't naked there, but what happened is his robe flew off. And his wife, who was raised in King Saul's house, got embarrassed and chastised him. This is all in your Bible. You can read it. And she said, you weren't acting too kingly today, were you? Kingly robe fell off. You know what he said? I love David's response. He said, I'll be more undignified yet for my God. Woo! Praise God. That's a man that wasn't going to let somebody else's influence cause him to quench the Holy Spirit. Now, once you practice quenching that, See, that's how I got off on that. Quenching that, Holy Spirit says, come, come on down to the front. Go ahead and give me all your praise. You know, uh, that's not God. I don't know if that's God. It's God. Who else is going to influence you to press in? I mean, come on. Let's not act dumber than a little kid here. God's the one saying, press in. Time is short. Redeem the time. The days are evil. It's God that's saying, you've got to have my spirit on the inside of you, working on the outside, praise God. Man, oh man. But once you practice that lifestyle of quenching, canceling his influence, it leads then to grieving him. And the side effect that most people don't notice is this. Though you may have approval of man, your sustaining power is being eaten away. All of a sudden, the power to keep going and face the day is now just MIA. Next thing you know, you yield to sin, the very sin that you were delivered from. Instead of yielding to the Holy Spirit, you're yielding to one or the other. You might as well just understand this. You're either going to yield to the spirit of the devil or the spirit of God. And I'm, I'm just going to tell you, because I'm supposed to be representing the Lord here in your life, you better yield to the spirit of God. And when you quench him, when you grieve him, you're not yielding to him. You got that? The Lord is never quenched and he's never grieved when you yield to him. That never, that never grieves him. That never causes heaviness or distresses. That never, ever puts out the fire. Well, that does conclude today's television broadcast. But if you would like to hear more from Pastor Jeremy File, we invite you to head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find every sermon that Pastor Jeremy has preached for your convenience. If you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We are located at 4400 South Crockett here in Amarillo, and our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. If you're not from Amarillo, we would still love to hear from you. You can email us at info at acceleratechurch.cc or give us a call. We want to know how can we pray for you? Where are you watching and tuning in from? We are so glad that you tuned in with us today.